On today's episode, we explore how scripture misinterpretations can shape conversations and perceptions in ways we never intended. We also look at how scriptures become distorted to serve our own ends, and how to approach the Bible in a more wholesome way on Soul Zero Two. And welcome to Soul Zero Two. This is the podcast that is putting the oxygen back into the Christian life one soul at a time. And today we're talking about lost in translation, why context matters, especially with the Bible. And just think about how many things were done in history uh, in the name of God, in the name of the Bible, like, you know, the Crusades or like slavery uh, or like the persecution of the Jews, all in the name of, of God because of the way people read the Bible. And that's why uh, many of the church fathers talked about reading the Bible in community, because in community, there's accountability. But l let's put it this way, and we're going to keep it kind of short today, but have your words ever been taken out of context? You meant one thing, and people interpreted what you said as something entirely different. It's happened to me many times, I'm sure it's happened to you. And this happens all the time in our culture, as politicians, journalists, and online voices have elevated the spinning of context to an art form. And uh, uh, Cambridge, uh, the Cambridge Dictionary um, uh, defines context, or, or the wrong use of context, as out of context. In other words, out of context means if words are used out of, con out of context, only a small separate part of what was originally said or written is reported with the result that their meaning is not clear or is not understood. And that's a pretty hefty kind of explanation for context. Now, in our culture, or rather if our culture is struggling to get context right, how much more shouldn't we Christians get context right when it comes to reading the Bible. This is the main point of what I want to share today. And uh, Bible scholar um, Robert Van Verst says that people long, I think I have it here, people long have long been turning the scriptures from Philippians 4.13 that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me into a Rocky Balboa life affirmation of winning life without knowing its true meaning. He goes on to explain the meaning that the meaning is is that Paul is addressing the persecuted church, people that are being killed every day and, and struggling and they're being maimed and tortured. And he's saying, look, you can do all things through Christ who, who strengthens you. You can survive this because no matter what happens, you're going to be with God. So, so this is a very, very important reason why we need to know context. And when I say context, I mean reading the Bible in its original setting, in other words, what did it mean? What did it mean at the time it was written? And to whom was it written? And what were they trying to say? And uh, Gordon Fee, again, he puts it in, in a way that very few could, but, but um, Gordon Fee was a, a famous Pentecostal theologian, but he was very respected by all the faith traditions. He was phenomenal. But he said, because the Bible is God's word, it has eternal re relevance. It speaks to all humankind in every age and in every culture. So the Bible has this, this elasticity of how it communicates to all of us in every culture and every time, which is amazing. It, it spoke to my gr grandparents and parents' culture in a mighty way, in their own way. So it is important that we understand what it is meant, what it meant to those at the time it was written, before we apply the meaning to ourselves, because often we, we as especially Western consumers, we tend to apply the Bible to ourselves of how it means. And well, this is what it means to me. So this is what, what it's got to mean, right? For, you know, for everybody. And, and that's not really what, what it means. Uh, that's not what they're saying. And uh, theologian and linguist Michael Card Michael Card, not the singer, the, the theologian, he argues that context, the context of a passage is what determines the meaning. But you got to get the context right. He says this. He said, if I shout, if I shout at a football game, bomb. Well, you know what it means. That they're throwing the long ball, right? For, for the touchdown, hopefully. For, for a pass. 
But if I shout the same words in a crowded airport, you expect panic. That's context. And that's why context is absolutely, utterly important. And there's a scripture I want to give you to talk about that, that uh, in a minute that, that describes how maybe we may have misunderstood it. But this is why we Christians should all study the Bible historically and not just read it. And not even just theologically, but with, historically. For instance, what did it mean when the psalmist said this in Psalm 126 and 6, where he says, Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Now, I've heard that scripture butchered, butchered by preachers over the years. And I've heard people trying to manipulate money out of other people use that scripture of saying, look, it's going to hurt when you sow into our ministry. It's going to hurt when you give us money, but God's going to bless you. You're going to be carrying those sheaves. And that's that's a lot, that's nonsense. That has nothing to do with the Bible. And a veteran missionary friend of mine who spent many years in Africa, and he, I, I don't know if he's with the Lord now, but he's been around for a long time. And he's he, uh, he ended up getting a PhD afterwards in um, communication, brilliant guy. But he explained it this way because he lived in that part of the world where, where this story has true context. He said, and this, these are my words, he said, when farmers, then and now, went out to sow seed in the harsh environments of the Middle East, they faced difficult odds. It might not rain for months, and if they sowed their seed in such conditions, they would waste it. If they were poor, it is possible that their seed, the seed in their hands, could have been the last seed they had before starvation. They could have made a meal out of the seed and make it into little cakes and eat them, and then hope for the best. But instead, they chose to tearfully sow the, the seed, risking and believing that God would bring harvest. And this is why it's so important to know context. <coughs> when it talks about those who go out weeping, it was talking about those people in the harsh harsh climates of the earth that they're looking at this seed as this is all I got, man. This has got to work. This is the context. And so we must always bear in mind that scriptures were written in the Iron Age and that the Iron Age has its own lens that people saw through. And this is how they would see that verse. And how do we know that? Because historically, this is, you know, when you look up the commentaries and you look up the lexicons and dictionaries, this this was the environment and still is in, in many parts of the world. So is the Iron Age still speaks to the digital age, said N.T. Wright. And but we but we have to get the context right. We have to do our due diligence as Christians before we stamp our modern meanings on words of the Bible. So what can I do to be a better Bible reader? How can I know the Scriptures better so that it's not lost in translation, as we title this? In short, you can begin by buying a good commentary and a Bible dictionary. These give historical backgrounds on what words meant and why they were written and when and how and, and all these things. It's a good start. And there's a great book if you ever want to want to pick it up by Gordon Fee. It's called How to Read the Bible for All That's Worth. It's amazing. It's amazing. When you read it, it's like, wow, you know, I don't think I've been reading it correctly. But I want to encourage you today that as you read the scriptures, don't just dump your meaning onto it before you find out what it really means and what it meant to them then. Then afterwards, then respectfully, you say, okay, what does it mean to me now? Okay. So I want to challenge you with that in, in, in this just short devotional. So until next time, uh, if you like this podcast, leave a like and um, make sure that as as you uh, as you read the word, that you read it in a wholesome way. So until next time, make sure you connect with us also. We, we connect through YouTube, through Buzzsprout, Spotify, Google Podcast, Facebook, etc. Leave a like and recommend it to a friend. God bless you.